Jen, do you want to kick us off? Sure. Welcome, everybody. Great to see everybody's smiling faces. I hope everybody's enjoying the rain. I know it's been raining here in Albuquerque on and off since about 1130. It's been awesome. So um, much needed moisture for sure. So hopefully everybody throughout the state, which I think we've got lots of folks from all over New Mexico against that super. So hopefully everybody is getting some of this much needed moisture. So I see that we're still getting some folks checked in, um, but at, on the uh, slide, um, if you guys haven't introduced yourself, especially those that just uh, bounced in, please introduce yourself in the chat. Let us know where you're from. Um, and of course, you can utilize the chat at any time during this evening's conversation if you have any questions or comments that you would like uh, addressed um, for um, our presenters today. We also will be recording our conversation and um, we'll post it to the department website in the event that you know somebody who was unable to be with us this evening or maybe you can be with us for a little bit and have to bounce out. So those recordings will be available um, so you can watch at your leisure. Uh, I'll go ahead and introduce myself. Um, my name is Jennifer Morgan. I'm the Hunter Education Coordinator for the department and normally I am based out of the Albuquerque Northwest Area Office, but we are still in teleworking world. So I come to you live from my uh, home office today. So I'll kick it over to Jessica. Hi everyone, my name is Jessica Fisher and I'm the shooting program coordinator for the department, usually working out of the Santa Fe office and I have uh, one more week in this job and I am going to move to Oregon, um, to Eastern Oregon, uh, to be closer to my family. So um, I'm going to miss this and miss all of you, but you know what, I can still, I can still tune in. <laughs> I'll be joining you from Oregon next time. <laughs> That is some benefits of virtual worlds for sure. <laughs> if we were never to go live, it might be a little challenging for you to hop on a plane and come, come live, so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jess. All uh, with Tristana. Hey, everyone. I'm Tristana Bickford. I'm the Department's Communications Director based out of Santa Fe. And like Jennifer and Jessica, I am in my home office. Um, enjoying the day. And just, Jennifer, it's been raining here all day. We had some crazy thunderstorms yesterday up here, so I've been loving it. It feels more like a monsoon season than May, um, so it has me a little bit worried about what's to come, but, but that's, uh, that, that's been up here. Um, but no, I, I'm excited to join everybody tonight, and I'm really excited to learn about fly fishing. It's an area of weakness for me in, in my um, skill bag. So I'm really glad that Trish is going to join us and, and hopefully give us some pointers and get me started on the, the right track. If, one quick story about fly fishing. My dad is like my biggest fan in the whole world. Like I can't do anything wrong in my daddy's eyes. And I went fly fishing, um, gosh, probably 15, 20 years ago. And I called him afterwards and I was like, daddy, I suck at fly fishing. And he goes, yeah, yeah, baby, you do. <laughs> I um yeah so I, I could take all of the tips that I can get so um thank you and know you guys aren't alone and most of you are probably well ahead of me in learning to fly fish so <laughs> <laughs> thanks Christiana okay Megan hi everybody my name is Megan Otero and I'm the assistant coordinator for Hunter Education um normally out of the Albuquerque office as well with Jennifer but uh, like everybody else coming to you from um, the office that's been in our house for the past year that I'm ready to get out of. So um, welcome tonight, everybody. I'm, I'm up for all the tips too. I've actually never really fly fished. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to hear, hear what we have tonight. Awesome, thanks, Megan. Um, I'm fairly new to fly fishing. I'm definitely not seasoned like Trisha um, is, but uh, I actually, it is my preferred method to fish now. So um, it's pretty rare when I break out my spinning rod and tackle. It's only normally when I go um, over to Texas and um, do some bass fishing, but I was watching an Orvis video today and I'm getting actually super excited about taking my fly fishing gear and fish for some small mouth bass and some large mouth bass, which would be super awesome. <laughs> um, so, 
Uh, I know we probably won't cover some of that today. We're definitely going to focus on uh, cold water species, but it, it's pretty interesting the, the spectrum of, of fish that are available for uh, fly fishing. So um, it's pretty neat. So let me just go to the next si uh, slide here. Um, if you haven't, I know some new people have just come into our session, so welcome. If you would please just in the chat introduce yourself and let us know where you're from. And without further ado, um, I'm going to kind of give a brief intro to our wonderful guest uh, speaker today, uh, Trish Valdez. Um, so welcome, Trish. We really appreciate you taking time today to be with us and um, start the conversation about fly fishing. We've gotten a lot of really good questions that have been uh, submitted to us um, over the last couple of weeks that we've compiled. I think based on um, kind of what you've submitted to us, you're definitely going to be covering 95% of, of some of these questions these ladies have, so we're super excited. But uh, let me go ahead and tell you all just a little bit about Trish, and then she will give some additional insight to her and her life um, of a uh, fly fisher person. Um, but Trish was born in California where she learned how to saltwater fish and spent most of her summers um, in Mora, New Mexico with her great grandparents, which is really cool. So she already had ties and thanks for transplanting back here um, to the land of enchantment. And it wasn't until she um, permanently moved to New Mexico that she would find her passion for fly fishing. Um, she's been fly fishing for over 20 years. Trish is a published writer in several journals and magazines. She's helped coordinate a casting clinic for New Mexico trout called um, or for women on the water. She's currently a mentor in the Mayfly project that's in Santa Fe, which I'm super uh, interested in hearing about too. So hopefully if we have some time, you can kind of give us some insight on what that, that's about. And of course, as you can see on the slide, she was featured on one of our billboards promoting fishing in New Mexico back in 2017, which is super cool. And it was funny because when I saw the picture, I'm like, gosh, that, she looks super familiar to me. And I'm like, oh, well, no wonder why she was on, on some billboards. So, um, and then when she's not on the water, she, or with her family and her cute little Scottish Terrier, Noah, which that's super cool. You can find her in the classroom where she teaches special education. And she's currently pursuing her doctorate at the University of New Mexico in special education. So that's awesome, Trish. So without further ado, I would like to introduce, uh, pass the baton over to Trish. And I will stop my screen sharing. Um, do we have Trish all uh, ready to go for some screen sharing? I believe so. Awesome. So let me bounce out of here. You guys let me know when. Okay, I am out and the floor is yours. Okay, better work. How come it's giving me a weird thing? Give me a second, hopefully it'll work. And let us know if you do have technical difficulties and we can we can pull it up on our end as well. Okay, can you guys see that? Not yet. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Always the joys of Zoom when you're trying to figure out, especially I've got too many monitors and I have to try to figure out, okay, where do I need to put my stuff so everybody can see, not just me, but everybody. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, it should have worked. Um, hold on just a second. So while I'm doing this, if you guys, I know there's probably about what, 26 or 27 of you, if you would do me a favor and put in the chat whether or not you fly fished, and um, if you want to go ahead and share for me because I don't want to take any more time, that would be cool. And I'll try and figure this out on my end. Does that work? Not yet. No, I know, but can you oh. guys just share it for me? Yes. So okay. um, for those of you also um, that aren't maybe familiar with Zoom and you've never used the chat function before, somewhere on your screen, you should have a little thought bubble and it says chat or if it's hidden, you might have to move your mouse around on your on your screen to find that chat function. And then, um, then you can type in 
what your experience level is, if any. And um, so it looks like we have several folks who have never fly fished before. Me Just too. beginning. Never so fly. Lots of newbies. Never have. And if you're interested in it, and if you have fished, where have you, um, why did you fish? Like who, all right, we got a kind of intermediate. Nice. Melinda. So our, um, I have to go into my system preferences and try and figure this whole thing out. So if you guys could share what I gave to you, that'd be awesome. Sure. I believe I've got, let me get it up. Or get out of what I just had up. I usually Google, you guys. I'm a teacher. I know Google like the back of my hand. I don't know Zoom that well. All right, I got you covered. You cool. ready? Yep, thank you. You're most welcome. Beginners. Okay. Oh, let me get these crazy boxes out of the way. All right. Thumbs up if you can see New Mexico fly fishing. Thumbs up. Yay. Okay. Yay. Thanks. I appreciate that. Kind of had a feeling that was going to happen. <laughs> All right. No we problem. can go to the next slide. Hi, everybody. I'm Trish. Um, you've heard most of pretty much what's going on. And what I asked you to do now in the chat box is just to tell me how long you've been fishing, if you have or if you haven't, where you like to fish. And um, who or what inspired you to start fly fishing? Because usually that's kind of where it stems from. You usually have somebody who kind of inspires you to fly fish. And that's kind of what I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about today. I am in no means like an expert, right? I just fish a lot. And so by fishing a lot, I've learned a lot. And I've kind of talked to a lot of people and we'll go into that. The other thing I wanted to talk to all of you about is that I do photography on the side too. So I love to take pictures of um, nature, fishing, landscapes, things like that. So I wanted to give away a couple of my prints. So you have to pay attention because I'm gonna be asking questions. I'm a teacher, that's what I do. So you will be, you will be quizzed and the first person to answer will definitely get one of my prints and I'll tell you how you can do that. So, if one of the ladies can help monitor chat for me, that'd be kind of cool too. If anything pops up, if, if any of you guys, because I don't mind if you interrupt at all. So I'm not gonna ask you to hold your questions after this presentation. You're more than welcome to um, chime in, unmute yourself and ask me or talk and we're good to go. All right, so let's go into the next slide, please. All right. So most of these things you already heard about. I was born in San Diego, but I used to come to Mora, New Mexico all the time, every summer, whether I wanted to or not. I'm glad I did. I'm actually writing an article about my experience in Mora and how the Mora River has affected me throughout my life and how that also inspired me to fish. One of the cool things is, is when you're out here in, this, in the country, compared to San Diego, where I used to do some saltwater fishing off the piers, which is nothing. When you come to these small rivers, it's, it's usually, it's an experience. For me, it is. And my dad used to come with me to the Mora River, because that's where we have property. And that's up north, if you don't know. It's over by Taos, Las Vegas area, kind of. And um, the river there used to be pretty prominent and it used to hold a lot of brown trout. And lately, things have changed, the environment and things like that, so the water has gone down quite a bit and we're losing a lot of fish. And so I'm writing an article about that in one of the publications that I write for. But my dad used to tell me back in the day when he was fishing in the Mora River that he would hand fish. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Do any of you guys know what hand fishing is? If you do, put it in the chat, I wanna to talk to you. So my dad would, and his brother would lean over the bank of the river and they would just lean their arm over and their hand over and they would literally grab trout from the side that were just sitting there kind of just chilling out. And that's how they used to fish. That was his favorite way of fishing. Um, I moved from California to New Mexico in 1985 and yeah, I've been going to college a lot. I have quite a few degrees. I just love learning and that's, why I like fly fishing too, because you just can't, you're always learning. Ooh, 
Tiffany. Tiffany knows how to hand fish, you guys. We're going to talk to Tiffany later. Okay. Um, so yeah, so I've been going to school for a long time um, and I just love to learn. And that's why I chose fly fishing because I don't think you can ever stop learning. I don't know enough about it, but I try to and I ask. So yeah, I've been fishing for over 20 years, but it doesn't mean that I'm stellar. It just means that I fished. Um, but these are some of the states that I fished in. And in fact, the Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, and Montana trip was a five day trip that I took with my son and we just fly fished everywhere. Like if we saw a river, we would stop the car and jump out and whoever got into that pool first, probably won. It was usually me, just letting you know. Um, so I love sharing the passion of um, fly fishing. I love teaching people about it. I love going with people fishing and just hanging out. And one of the things that I really like to do is take my students back when I was actually in the classroom, because right now I'm a resource teacher for Albuquerque Public Schools. So um, I help new special ed teachers, but I used to take my students to, um, I don't know if you've heard of it or not, but it's called Tingley Beach and it's over here in Albuquerque and there's a fly fishing pond and it's actually really good if you wanna learn how to cast, if you wanna just learn how it would be to dry fly fish or to nymph fish or to strip streamers in. And it's right here in Albuquerque. So I would take my students to the fishing pond and game and fish would, would help me out with little day passes for them, which was pretty cool because they love that because they don't get out that often. Um, like I said, I like to do photography, take road trips. I drive everywhere. I write. I love chocolate. And my favorite thing is probably Dr. Pepper with extra ice. That goes with me with M&Ms every time I'm out. Okay. Favorite New Mexico streams and rivers. The Valle Vidal. If you haven't been there, you got to go. It's up in northern New Mexico. It's what I call like skinny water. So it's not very wide. It's pretty skinny. And all around the edges, you'll see some grass coming up. And that's where the fish like to hide. Red River, one of my favorites, both of them, either by the hatchery or by the ski valley. Love Red River. Cimarron was just there last weekend before we had all this rain. And it was amazing amazing. Um, they were coming up for dries already and they were fishing underneath the water and we'll talk more about that as well. Pecos, Hemis, especially the Vice Caldera where you have to get a special user's permit and we'll talk more about that. Rio Grande and of course San Juan, the quality waters. Some of my favorite go-to flies, I love to dry fly fish. That's probably one of my favorite things to do. Um, dries are up on top. That's where you catch them up on top. And it usually happens in the summer. I know somebody asked a question as to when do you use certain dries or when do you use certain flies? And dries, you usually use them in the summer, fall. But to be honest, sometimes I use them all the time. You just never know. Um, so I like stimulators, El Caracatus, Adams, and dry droppers, which means that you use a dry fly fish, I mean a dry fly, and then you hang a little nymph off of that and it will hang underneath the water. So you've got the dry up on top and you've got the nymph on the bottom. And that's kind of like an attractor sometimes. I like to fish like that. Um, the, wet, the wet flies are usually flies that are, I mean, they are flies that are underneath the water. Some of the ones that I like to use, and if you guys want to, you can screenshot this so you can take a picture of some of these different flies that I like. And that way you can look them up and see what they actually look like. But a flashback pheasant tail is one of my favorites. Um, hare's ear is good. A beadhead prince nymph, stone nymphs, annelids, midges, San Juan worms, eggs, and those mop flies. You're gonna ask me what a mop fly is? Literally made from the hairs from a mop. Um, so anyways, it's kind of cool. A lot of people kind of frown on mop flies, but when they catch that big fish off of one, they're like, oh yeah, mop flies, just don't tell anybody. <laughs> Um, terrestrials, these are your, your dry land kind of bugs, like hoppers, any hopper, grasshopper, ants, beetles, crickets. Those are so much fun to throw at the Valle Vidal or the Valle Caldera, Pecos, anywhere where they're coming up. You have to do it when they're out though. So 
So if you walk in the grass and you see grasshoppers flopping around, throw in a hopper. Um, streamers. So these are supposed to mimic like little fish, leeches, things like that, that are kind of like, browns are pretty territorial, brown trout are. And so when you throw a streamer in the water um, and you go into a brown trout's territory, they're gonna hit it hard, they're gonna eat it. So it's usually something that, it is something that goes underneath the water and you, you strip it. And by what I mean by stripping is you pull the line every so often so it mimics the fish kind of moving, if you will. So yeah, definitely take a screenshot of this and take a look on how you can fish something like that. All right, let's go to the next slide, please. All right, giveaway time. I hope you all are paying attention. The first person to put in the chat box, what was my favorite stat? Oh, heck, who was it? Ooh, look at this. Who won? I was, so, Janelle was quick on the chat. Janelle dang, <laughs> I saw that right away. Oh, my dad's gonna be happy. He's, he's not with us anymore. This was taken in Cimarron. And yeah, I told him to hold those fish, so. Anyways, he's gonna be happy that you said that. Nice work. Yeah, he loved to hand fish. Okay, so you'll get, I'll give the girls you, um, my email and you can email me and then we can work on getting you a print that would, that would fit something that you're interested in. All right, let's go on to the next one. I love that you're paying attention. All right, so here's the story about why I actually started fly fishing. Um, Got my degree in journalism, it was my bachelor's, and I wanted to work at any TV station. I was gonna be the next Barbara Walters, I thought. And so I came to Albuquerque, I went to Channel 13, KRQE, because they were interviewing, and um, it was just for a really low position, seven bucks an hour, but I was like dying to get in. So I interviewed with this guy named John Tischendorf, we used to call him Tisch, and, um, Man, he was stern, white hair, blue piercing eyes, and just sat back in his chair. You could tell that he liked to smoke cigars and drink brandy, and he was like one of those boys' boys. And Lobo basketball fan, he loved the Lobos and everything, and he loved hunting. So we're interviewing. I sucked really bad. I didn't have any experience, and I was dying. So I'm like looking around. I'm like, God, what can I connect with him? I saw a picture of him fly fishing and it was on his desk and I knew that I liked fishing but I didn't know how to fly fish and so some of the ladies here and I'm dating myself but back in the day there used to be a show called Touch by an Angel I'm not sure if you guys know about that show okay good so that was the number one show on channel 13 the number one and so um he goes do you know of any of our programming do you know anything about what we do and I was like, holy shoes. So I said, um, yeah, 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 I do. I go, hey, did you hear about that new program that's coming to CBS? And he's like, oh, what? And I said, it's called Touched by an Angler. And he thought it was the funniest thing. I don't know why. Okay, I don't know if you get it or not. It's a little joke. And he goes, touched by an angler. Well, son of a b And he said the B word. But anyways, he said, son of a He goes, we're going to get along so good. You fish? And I said, I do. And I'm like, oh, my God. He goes, do you know how to fly fish? And I said, no, not really. And he goes, well, you're going to learn. And he goes, let's show you around. So I got hired based on something silly as that. And he and I got to know each other really well. He was like my second dad. I loved him to death. Every time during lunchtime, we would go to REI, we'd go to Charlie's Sporting Goods, Los Pinos Fly Shop when they used to have the older store, not the newer one. And we would plan our San Juan trip because he was going to take me and I had never been there before and I was so stoked and super excited. So we were doing all this planning. He gave me one of his vintage drills. It was a click pole, which I'll have to show you what that is like. Um, and he just, we were just pretty cool. We were known as Tish and Trish. And he would go hunting with us up at our property and he was just pretty awesome. Um, Right as our trip was getting ready to get um, taken, what happened was is he started having some issues medically and it was pretty devastating because we found out that he had throat cancer and he just found out about it and so it came on very sudden and um, gosh, within about a month of finding that out, 
he was in hospice and he passed away. Um, before he passed away, we tried to do everything we could to see if we could get things going, but he didn't have enough life insurance or insurance from the TV station to pay for all of these things like the chemo and everything. So he passed away and I was devastated and we never had a chance to go to the San Juan and I kind of just like put everything aside and I just really didn't want to do anything for a while. So that's how it got started. He's the one who showed me everything, took me everywhere and I just asked questions and he showed me what he knew. I was so looking forward to fishing with him, but the one thing that he did tell me was, if you ever get a chance, go fishing in Idaho. And um, I'm glad that I did that last year. So let's go on to the next slide. All right, let's fast forward a little bit. The girl in this picture, her name is Deborah, And Deborah is an amazing fly fishing woman. And she was my son's, see if we can get this straight, my son's girlfriend's mom, okay? Um, I knew that she fly fished and I wanted to fish with her. She'd been fishing for a long time and primarily at the San Juan River. So my first trip with her was, let's go fishing. I'll show you how to do it. That's hard because when you don't really know what you're doing, it's difficult. So the only thing that I had was John Tischendorf's reel. So I thought, how am I gonna do this trip if I don't really have a lot of equipment? I don't have any equipment except for that reel. So what I did was I went to Walmart and I bought a fly rod that had no bend in it whatsoever. It wasn't flexible. In fact, it was straight. So anytime I tried to fish, it was just the ugliest thing. I didn't know how to put the reel on. I didn't know what kind of line to use. I didn't know anything, but I wanted to look good. So I went out and rented some boots and waders. I also bought a $300 pair, $300 pair of glasses because everybody said you have to be able to see in the water. You need polarized sunglasses. And I didn't know what that really meant. So I went and I bought some sunglasses. They were Revo's. And I remember paying $300 for them. But the one thing that I didn't put was those little things that hold your sunglasses on. So that was just not good. So here I go with all her friends. I don't know anything and that's okay. But what happened was, is that I've got to figure out how to look decent, okay? So I'm on this water. I go, <laughs> as I'm getting, well, before I get on the water, I'm getting ready. So I've got all my stuff and she goes, where's your fly rod? So I take it out and of course she goes, oh my God, it doesn't even bend. So she's like messing around with it, making fun of it and everybody's laughing at me. And I'm like, okay, I get it, I know. She goes, well, this will work for now. And I'm like, okay. She goes, where's your net? And I said, oh yeah, I've got a net. And the net that I had would probably make everybody cringe. It was one of those nets that had the aluminum around it. And then it had like the green netting on the inside that would descale any fish. Okay. So it was like gross. You don't use that. And if you do, you're probably going to jail. So don't. And so I had the net and she starts laughing at it. She goes, you can't use this. You're going to kill the fish. And so she hangs it up. And I don't know if any of you have ever been to the San Juan River, but one of their most famous places there is Abe's. And it's got this really old hotel and everybody kind of stayed at Abe's and it was like the place to go. So she hung my net on the outside of Abe so everybody could laugh at it. She said, I'll let you use mine. And then she said, okay, so we're going to go. So we go out into the water. We hiked down this thing that was crazy in these weeds and bushes. And then I called it Vietnam because as you're going through, all these like mosquitoes are attacking you. You're like in this mud and you're dredging through. And then all of a sudden, once you go past all that, it's just this open water that's beautiful and you can see the fish coming up and it was just like amazing. And it was just a really beautiful picture in my head. So she's trying to show me how to fish. She strings me up. She puts my flies on. She puts my indicator on, which is kind of like a bobber, if you will. And she said, okay, this is how you do it. So she would show me, I would try it. It'd get knotted, things were bad. I fell in the water all the way in up to my neck. There's sand everywhere. My 300 pair of glasses fell in the water. And because the sand was sifting and everything, I never found them. I lost them. So all you have to do is just try. It can be intimidating. There's a ton to learn. The flies, the etymology, the knots, the gear, the everything. And you have to try and look good because you don't want somebody to say, oh my God, 
That's the hard part. You don't have to be so hard on yourself. So you really should go fishing as much as you can. We went so much after that. And I've actually like bypassed her where like I'm tying flies now, I can do all kinds of stuff. And the way that I did that and what I put in my, my presentation here is if you're comfortable, wait away from the group, wait away from somebody that you're fishing with. And, and sometimes you just need to be alone. Um, I go fishing alone all the time. I'm not telling you to do that because that can be a little dangerous sometimes. But I do go alone a lot because a lot of times when I'm going with somebody, I just get too distracted and I like to be by myself sometimes. Watch videos. YouTube videos are amazing. You can learn so much from them. Do research. Absolutely, if you can afford it, take a guide trip and, and make sure that the guide is somebody who's going to connect with you, be patient with you, and um, help you understand the river that you're in. And just don't give up. Don't ever stop. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, giveaway time, here we go. First person to type in the chat wins. What expensive item did I lose at the San Juan River? Go. Dang, Caitlin. Oh, look at everybody. What a dummy. Caitlin, Caitlin jumped on that one right away, so I got her written down. Caitlin, you're lucky. Okay, so yeah. A uh, note to self and to everybody, don't go buy 300 pair of sunglasses. We're gonna talk about that later. I have $25 uh, sunglasses that work just fine. Okay, nice job, Caitlin. Next slide. All right, some of you have asked in some of the questions about equipment, and so that's hard because the first thing that you need to ask yourself is where are you gonna be fishing at? So you wanna figure out, are you gonna be fishing in the rivers and the lakes and big river and small streams? Um, personally, for me, I'll give you what I like to use and then I'll give you some suggestions on what you should do. But I like a five weight. I like a nine foot. And that's for the San Juan, for Rio Grande and lakes. We're talking like bigger water. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit about the weights of the rods. So the smaller the number, the lighter it is, the smaller it is, the bigger the number, the bigger it is, the heavier it is. Um, I might even use a five weight nine foot, and I have in skinny water. There are some really skinny streams, like even in the Vice Caldera, where I'll use a bigger rod because I have to cast it so far. And I'm also using like really thick tippet, so that way I can pull that hopper out of that grass if it gets stuck. So there's different situations for why you would have something. So it's kind of hard to say. But if you're going to just generally get a rod, I'd probably get like a five weight. I'd probably get an eight and a half foot or a nine foot rod. And for me, a longer rod, if I'm in bigger water, like the San Juan River or the Rio Grande, is better for mending. And what mending is, is like when you're fishing and you cast your line out, sometimes the line goes with a current and it gets in front of you. You want to mend that line behind it. And so if I have a longer rod, I can do that a lot easier. So for smaller streams, I prefer a three or four weight. Lighter, smaller, it's also shorter. So six and a half feet or seven feet. So that way it's just not getting stuck in everything. It's a lot easier just to like flick it over the stream. So I'll use this also at the Valles Caldera or the Valle Vidal, sometimes Pecos. Um, just depends on how stealthy you wanna be. So reels if you think about it the reel needs to match the weight of the rod it needs to feel balanced um so when you go shopping for a rod and a reel you want to put that reel on your rod and make sure that it balances on your pointer finger and it feels right generally the size of the fly line coincides with the weight of the rod um but like the last point says, there's so much information and so many things out there and people will say, oh, you should buy this. No, this one's better than that. Oh, you got to do this. Literally, go to the fly shop and check it out and try the rods. There's uh, all of the fly shops will let you try their rods mostly, um, let you try on the reels on their rods, let you see how it feels. There's even some fly shops that will um, actually let you rent rod and reel to see how you like it. They also rent waders and boots. So you don't need to go out and buy all this stuff. So it's really 
kind of crazy to spend a lot of money on something that you're not really sure if you want to do it or not. Um, waders versus wet waiting. Waders are those lovely pants that make you look amazing, ladies. I'm lying to you. Um, no, they actually, some do. I don't know. They're weird. But I like to wear the pants. Some of the ladies like to wear the um, hip weight, I mean the chest waders, which are up to your chest. But I'm four foot 11. And if I do chest waders, it's like way past my head. So I like wearing the pants because I'm just going to share this because it's just ladies, right? There's only ladies in here. Okay. So when you have to go to the restroom, you know, taking off that whole chest waiter thing, it's like crazy. And then there's like mosquitoes and you get bitten places where you don't even want to talk about. So anyways, what I'm saying is that it's a preference. So try things on. Go to the fly shops. If you're going to get waiters, try them on. Make sure that you can bend over because you have to tie your boots. And if they're too tight and you go to tie your boots, you're going to lose air and, and you might faint. I'm not even kidding. Like you might think it's funny, but it's true. So try things on. Make sure that your boots are one size bigger than what you normally wear. So waders are a must at the San Juan River. That water is 42 degrees all year round. And you can get hypothermia within the first, well, I don't know, less than five minutes. So you cannot just wear anything. You need to wear waders and you need to wear um, boots, wading boots. So when you're wet wading in small streams, like I love wet wading in Pecos in the summertime or anywhere else and it's just so much fun to get wet go into the water climb around the rocks i don't know how you guys are but i love doing that and just sneaking up on the fish walking upstream that's my favorite thing to do um i usually use my nikes some nikes that i could care less if they get wet or not for me it's a better grip but there's water shoes out there that you can use you can even get wading boots and just wear the wading boots and shorts or pants you don't have to get waders um, Okay, this is a big thing for me. Um, a waiting stick or just a piece, just a wood stick. So waiting sticks are kind of expensive. They're usually about 75 to $100 because they fold up and they fit nicely on the back of your, on the side of your pants. But if you're just doing um, wet waiting or even if you're at the San Juan, I look for a stick. I look for a walking stick and I grab a stick off the floor and I use that. It just helps. Um, me, some people don't, some people are more balanced than I am, but I'm not, I'm uncoordinated like crazy. But on the bottom of my boots, I have um, studs that are screwed in that help me get grips on the gravel. But I don't really like to wear those other than just the San Juan because it can um, damage the bottom of the, the floor of the river. And especially if there's like reds where the fish are actually um, spawning. That's what a red is called, where they lay their eggs. You don't want to walk on that. So um, I do. I use a stick. Plus, it just helps get all the brush out of the way. Now in the summertime, everything's going to grow. Um, safety is a big thing. And I just don't think about this until I read a story about somebody getting eaten by something. But safety is a big thing. Or falling in the river. You don't want to fall in the river. So just be aware of your surroundings. Um, in and out of the water, always make noise. So that way, you know, people know that you're kind of present, especially if you're like in the high country, in the forest, you don't want to be surprised. And so it's, it's always good to go with somebody if you're going to go somewhere out there. Again, fly shops have rentals and they have really nice people there. I used to work at Los Pinos Fly Shop for about seven months and I learned so much from those people. It's not even funny. Um, all of the fly shops here in New Mexico have been amazing and you can learn a lot from them. Okay, remember don't spend a lot. So I have a video, I don't know if it's gonna play. It didn't look like it? Oh, I saw hey, something. So I don't have the video link. Jessica, are you able to, I can stop sharing and, and you can. Actually, you know what? I think if you go down on the bottom with your cursor, yeah, hit the play button. Where did it go? I know it's hiding. I stole it. My pointer wants to find it. There it is. Yeah. 
Hello. So videos don't usually look as good as normally mm -hmm. as they would if they're not on Zoom. <laughs> um, so anyways, that was a picture, that was a video of my son and I and we were fishing um, and we just had so much fun. You can get pretty deep in the water, you just need to be very careful. So that's what I have. I hope you enjoyed it. Do you have any questions? We have some questions here that came in earlier. Um, I don't know who asked this one. But asking about easy access points, like not far to hike places near Santa Fe. Yes, so, I believe Jill had that question. So yeah, that'd be great if you could give her some pointers on that. That's fantastic. Cool. Yeah, definitely Pecos for sure. Um, the Pecos River is pretty close to Santa Fe. And there are places that you can hike deep in if you wanted to, to hit some, um, some of the good water. But there's also just really good water just right off the street. Um, you just have to drive a little bit and kind of check things out and make sure that um, it's something that you can access. Again, walking stick will help. You can even use like ski poles. I've seen people use those, but I know what you mean by easy access stuff because it's hard to hike sometimes. Red River by the Hatchery also has some easy access points. Um, so there's a lot of good places. Santa Cruz is a pretty good lake that you can just fish right off the side. You can also take a boat in there if you guys have a boat. Um, and then we have another question. Somebody who lives near Los Alamos and where can they fish? Holy moly, if you don't mind driving, there's fishing all over. You can go to Jemez, the Bias Caldera, and the SUP is a special user permit. So you actually have to go onto the website for the Bias Caldera and um, request a, a special user permit. It's free. You just have to show that you have a fishing license, fill out their form, and they'll give you a permit that will allow you to park there and fish there. And it's great fishing for browns. Um, there's even some couple of bows in there. I caught a sucker fish one time, but it's beautiful. Benton Lake, of course, everybody likes to go there. El Vado, Chama River and Brazos is really close by. So those are, those are some things that you can do. Are there any other questions? So Trish, we did have a few come in also. Um, I think you kind of touched on this already, but the good fly rod length and weight. Um, so you're typically recommending for those brushier, smaller tributaries to use that four weight, maybe a five or six foot, or I'm sorry, a six or seven foot rod. But um, I'm with you, I have just one rod and I use the five, foot, five weight, nine foot. Um, and, and Orvis has a clear water, which is great for beginner starters. They have an awesome warranty, um, so if you can um, afford to buy that, and, and people think Orvis, oh my gosh, that's totally out of my price range. The clear rodder set comes with the rod and the reel, yep. and it's very affordable. And, and like I put in the chat, I broke the tip off of mine, and I sent it to them, and they replaced it for free. So yeah, um, especially if you're getting a lot of use out of your fly rod, it's going to happen. Something's going to break and the eyes and the, the tips especially, um, especially if you fish a lot, it'll break off and just over wear and tear. So it's a great warranty if you can do that. Yeah, um, right. Then another really great question, Trish, is how do you know what size of fly to use? Does it relate to the hatch, you know, the insects that are, um, you know, coming off the water, the emergers, um, and then of course the size of fish. I have caught little tiny Gila trout uh, on a big hopper. <laughs> yeah. So it, it sometimes, depending on the size of the fish, it doesn't matter. I've caught some really big um, cutthroat on a little tiny chironomid. So go ahead and take it away with some of those. No, yeah, you're spot on. Um, you got it. Like a lot of people think that if they just flip a rock over close to the edge of the river, that that's what's hatching. But literally, they're eating deeper in, like in the seams. 
So if you don't mind getting wet and you want to see what's going on, you can just like dunk your hand in there, flip over a rock and see what's there. So you can see what's hatching there underneath the water so you can kind of match that hatch. Um, again, for dries and hoppers, you want to make sure that it's time for that. Um, I've caught fish on dries at the San Juan all year long, but that's because I use like a parrot ant and I use that on top and it looks like a midge cluster because they love to eat those little tiny midges that look like little gnats. So um, you just got to see what's out there. Usually when I go out to the river, I don't tie anything on. I wait until I get to the river and I look and I watch and I see what's going on. If I don't see any fish coming up. I'll try subsurface below the water. And um, I might even try like a dry dropper, like I was saying, or um, just something that goes along the bottom. And um, it, once the dries are on, you've got to match that hatch. You can't just put on any dry. But one of the ones flies that I love the most because it mimics a lot of different things is a stimulator. And so if you get a chance, take a look and see what that is. It's usually my go-to fly when I'm doing dries. And especially um, in bigger water, like if I'm fishing like, I don't know if the Pecos is running kind of high and they're coming up, I'll put on a big stimulator, like a size eight. So the bigger the, the bigger the number, the higher the number, like a 20, 24, the smaller the fly. The lower the number, the bigger the fly. I know it's weird, that's how it goes. Um, so I like to put on a size eight simulator and drop like a little nymph off of that. And it's just, it's just a lot of fun. But like I said, it's, there's so much to learn in just the amount of time that I'm allotted to talk that just go out there and talk to people and, and try to research and fish with people. And if anybody's around here, I'm more than happy to fish with you. So contact me and I will be more than happy to take you. I'm not a guide, by the way. I'm just a girl who fishes. Awesome, Trish. Uh, we had one other, uh, I have, do have some other questions um, on here um, and we'll kind of do that at the very end because it's talking about special trout waters and a couple other things with the, the new fishing ribs. Um, but what tips do you have for trying to be stealthy on some of that? Because again, the fish can see us. It's amazing how well they can see. Um, sometimes I've literally belly crawled to a really good pool and it definitely pays off. Um, but go ahead and give them some tips there. Well, Jennifer, that's what I do too. I <laughs> literally get dirty. I will crawl to the edge literally on my stomach if I'm going to do it. Or I wish I had a picture of it, but. Um, there was this one, the, it's called the Rio de los Pinos River. And it's part in New Mexico. It's up in northern New Mexico, and then part of it's in Colorado. But the water was really thin, skinny, but, and it was low, and it was hopper season. So I literally stood back probably about maybe 10 feet from the river, 10, 15 feet, and I launched that <clears throat> hopper all the way into the water. So you can do it, you can cast from far, and that's when you need that longer rod. So that's what I was talking about. But either that or just like as stealthy as possible. In the Vice Caldera and in the Valle Vidal where the grass grows over the edges of the river, um, I do that as well. I stand back as far as I can and I just let out as much line as I can and I whip it back and forth and I just throw it in the river. And then it might get caught in the grass, but you gotta use that really thick like 2X tip it, 1X tip it just to rip it out of the grass. But the fish are so hungry, they'll eat it right away. So there's different techniques for fishing like stealthy, but yeah, you just gotta get dirty or cast good. <laughs> <laughs> and if you if you fish long enough, whether you're spin casting or you're fly fishing, you're gonna lose flies and it just happens. You're gonna get a knot at the end. It just happens. Mm -hmm. I have caught I have had to climb up in trees and get my favorite lure out and it's just part part of it so um but it's part of the adventure too um i know that if i didn't have those those challenges it wouldn't make me a better fisher person so you definitely learn um how to cast better if you've got some some obstacles <laughs> i guess you can say um so some of the other uh, more specific questions that we had with game and fish related is um the designated trout waters um, basically, what that's referring to is, um, and, and if you have a, a copy of the fishing ribs, these are available electronically too, but you can get them at any of our vendors, Walmart, Big, um, Big R, uh, stuff like that. Um, it talks about special trout waters, and they kind of have it with the red and green chili theme, 
and it's telling you that if it's a certain color, then it's catch and release. If it's another color, then there might be a bag limit. And then if sometimes if it's a dual color, then it's, it's also got um, a bag limit and a tackle limit. So you might only, you, can, you can't use um, lie or you can only use barbless hooks, um, stuff like that. So that's what those special trout waters mean. And specifically, somebody was asking about Blue Water, Blue Water Creek, I believe is the tributary that goes into Blue Water. There could be trout in there, but we put tiger muskies in Blue Water. So if there are any trout in there, there there's probably not a lot. <laughs> so Blue Water is probably not going to be your, be your best trout um, water. Um, but typically, unless you're on the San Juan or I believe on the, on the Cimarron, um, they'll have these signages that tell you what those designated trout water mean and what you can and can't use. And so don't get intimidated by that. And of course, it's, it's right here too. Um, so don't let that intimidate you on, on that. And then basically, I think somebody was also asking about um, that if you don't fly fish very often and you're not 100% sure on on how to kind of translate our, our rules and information. Um, one, you can always give us a call and, and we are happy to talk to you. Um, we can get you in touch with um, you know, Trish or our fisheries division on trying to decipher certain things if you're super confused. Um, but basically, um, Jessica and I were talking about this ahead of time. It's like, if you know you're gonna go fish for just trout, and so you can look up on the, the um, in, in the in the book, you know, hey, I want to just go fishing for trout, and this is the specific water that I want to go to, and then kind of just narrow it down, because yeah, if you're looking at a big picture, it's a lot of information. <laughs> so Trish, any tips that you can give them on, on deciphering some of those, maybe some of the challenges you might have had on deciphering some of the, the fishing rules and regulations? Yeah, it's, it's actually really important, because um, especially like at the Bias Caldera, They'll, they'll check, make sure that you have your permit. They'll check and make sure that your all your flies are barbless. So you either have to crimp them down or just um, get flies that don't have that. It's just important that you know what you're fishing for, how to fish for it, because, you know, just follow the rules. I, other than that, you can look ahead of time, like she's saying, but for the most part, just, yeah, research and know what you're going to be doing. But if you do happen to hop up on something, that doesn't have any information. Usually they do though, right, Jennifer? Typically they'll be, yeah. if, it's a, if it's a specific trout water, it will definitely have signage. But if you're in, a, in an area that has no special signs, it's pretty much you can use a barbed hook um, and, and, hey. and it's kind of wide open on what you can use on those waters. So, um, yeah. but definitely be sure to look at the bag limits too, because um, those can sometimes change depending upon the fish that you're wanting to, to take out of the water. So Definitely. if anybody wants to take a ride up to northern New Mexico, Murphy Lake just opened up after two years of being shut down. And that's such a cool little lake. Um, and you can use anything there. I think the bag limit is like four or six, but there's some pretty big rainbows and cutthroat in there. And it's really, really well kept. Um, so yeah, check it out. And that's also the one thing too is just to make sure that you know that if you have to pay or not. A lot of places you have to pay the, the fee of five dollars for what a day use, and so you can get your um, pass for forty bucks. That's what I do. Perfect. And we did have another question come in the chat: is when is your next casting clinic? Woo. Mm. So, women on the water is on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook. I. I don't really want to do too much social media, so I'm usually on Instagram only. Um, but if you look up Women on the Water on Facebook, they should have information on when the next casting clinic is. Um, I know we did one for free, and it was during the pandemic, and I'm not really sure when they're going to do another one. The other option is some fly shops have casting clinics. They also have um, Fly Fishing 101 clinics. So look up Los Pinos, you can look up um, the real life in Santa Fe. Um, there's a ton of them out there and they usually do casting clinics. Sometimes they're not that expensive, like maybe 150 plus they give you a little box of flies and they take you out to the park and you can cast. Um, 
I'm open to cast with anybody. If you ever want to meet me out in the park, I'm down for that. I do that a lot. Awesome. For free. Thank you. Thanks, Cheryl, for saying um, about the state parks pass. Um, that's really helpful to have, especially if you do recreate in state parks, um, other than just fishing, that annual pass is, is great for all the way around. And then um, Instagram, Trisha's Instagram page is, is up there. So follow her for sure. And what's the Mayfly Project? Ah, oh, Mayfly Project. Um, so that's kind of like a nationwide kind of organization where they um, work with children who are in foster care. And so what they like to do is expose them to um, outdoor, um, just outdoor life and fly fishing. And so you're working with foster children that are at risk and you're teaching them how to fly fish. And it's pretty cool. So I just hopped on board with them and we're supposed to have five fishing trips up until the fall um, with foster children, so. That's awesome. Yeah. So any, anybody out in the, the virtual world um, has, has a, a, a knows of an individual who could benefit from this type of, um, be sure to pass that along. Hey, Jennifer. Um, a couple of things that I, go ahead. I think there was a question that might've got skipped over from Melinda. Um, what tips do you have for stealth and skinny rivers where there's not a lot of trees and the water is shallow? I think we covered where there's not a lot of trees, the water is shallow. Yeah, that's where I would go like 15 feet back and I would cast from far. And if there isn't anything behind you, you can do your regular fly cast where it's overhead and you can do that. But if you've got bushes and trees behind you, you want to roll cast. So look those things up, look up roll cast. That's my favorite cast to do. So that way things don't get stuck. Glad you asked. And also just like, it's kind of like a mend cast where you just pick up your line and then you flip it over to the right and you let it go down to the water. Um, I rarely do I ever overhead cast unless I'm doing like a dry fly. So look up yeah. different ways of casting. That would be a good thing to do, but yeah. yeah well Roll casting is great to use if it's a little windy. Um, yeah, so sure. that's always great too. So it doesn't just take your fly and your, your leader and just take it wherever it wants to go. So that's super helpful. Yeah. So thanks, thanks Megan. Um, so a couple of resources that I also wanna pop up and um, Jessica just put the Mayfly project up on the chat. So I do wanna do one more screen share um, if it'll let me. Okay, um, give me a thumbs up if you can see that real quick. Okay, great. Um, and I know we're kind of um, taking a little longer. I know a few ladies were on board for um, some early scouting, but I think we might have to roll that um, to, to June's um, social hour, which may work a little bit better. Um, so we um, just have a lot of fly fishing or any of our topics are really hard to talk about in 45, 30 minutes or less. So we definitely don't want to share, sell this short because um, this is a perfect time to start getting out on the water. So, um, but here are just some department resources, uh, fishing tips and conditions in a trip planner. You can go right up to our website. And what I really like is you can break it down by species. And so it'll kind of give you the, the species and the, the times of the year where fishing is gonna be ideal or it's not. And so these are just um, the species breakdown on the top. And then you can also select the water. I just picked Red River for this particular graph. Um, it'll show maybe that May is a little bit slow, but we're getting into the peak of that uh, fishing season. So, you know, these are great resources. And again, these are always just kind of on an average. Um, you could get out on the water, just like what Trish said on the Cimarron, especially before the runoff really gets high and heavy and, or after those rains. Um, and hit that before all of that stuff starts coming down those tributaries and the fishing can be really, really ideal. So, um, so there's that. The other thing that I want to point out is Orvis is literally right now um, doing a free online fly fishing 101 series. You just basically sign up for it either through Facebook or Instagram. Um, I signed up for it because I thought if I'm going to plug this, I want to see what it's about. And you know what? It gives really easy instruction on how to tie um, the knots. So for tying your tippet to your um, fly, 
and, and tying, um, I'm, the name just totally escaped me, Trish, so please help me, but it's the, uh, the knot from your leader to, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I can't even remember the, the type of knot. Sorry, um, I was on mute. Are you talking about the clinch knot? Yes, the clinch knot. I want, I, that totally escaped me. <laughs> so it will, it, sometimes that could be intimidating and I've tried to tie that sometimes. And I'm like, now it just totally fell apart. And so there's really good, easy instruction. It tells you the six types of flies that, hey, that normally will, you, will work 90% of the time. And so it's really, these are, this is a really, really good um, free online um, place to start as well. And what's nice is once you sign up for it and they send you the video, you can keep it. And so um, Orgus is a great, um, resource to have. So just wanted to give that a little bit of a plug. Um, and I think it's really very useful. So take advantage of that. Um, I know a lot of the times when I have questions and I can't talk to somebody who's very knowledgeable, I'm all about Google. I'll Google it, you know? <laughs> so Google it can be your friend for sure. Especially if maybe Trish is unavailable. Maybe she's out on the water somewhere and she can't answer your, your text or your phone call. So Google it. Four more days, ladies, and it's summertime. I will be on the water somewhere. Yeah, I do want to open the floor up to any anything that if somebody has a personal question or comment um, for Trish, I'd like to open it up to anybody. Everybody's being shy. <laughs> and what I would like to do too, and we were kind of talking about this, um, when we're doing our turkey hunting um, social hours is maybe circle back around later on in the summer and find out how everybody's doing, sharing stories, um, challenges, um, and then maybe how coming into the fall, um, how do you change, change your skills and abilities for fall to winter type of, of fishing skills. So, um, so we always like to also um, open the floor up to everybody on um, other items that you guys want to learn or more know, learn more about. Um, obviously, we're going to do early season uh, scouting next go around. So we'll start our, our social hour in June. Um, Tristana had put the next social hour date of June 22nd at 5.30. Uh, save the date. So we'll definitely roll our early season scouting uh, to that, and I might beef up that a little bit more. I'm seeing that um, we'll have a little more time, but we definitely want to know from you ladies what other topics that would be beneficial to you um, to talk about. So put those things in the chat. Um, we, want, we, we want you guys to drive this train and, and tell us what you like to learn and want to know more about, and the sky's the limit for sure. Um, so let us know if, if you can't think of it right now, um, you guys can always uh, reach out to us on our email, phone, give us a phone call, send us a text, and let us know, hey, um, I went out camping this weekend and I had um, a, a light bulb moment and I want to learn more about, you know, X. So you can get in touch with us later on too if you have something um, so, we know, so we know how to, to best get you guys some information out there. Ladies, did you happen to get the two people that won? So um, I do. Uh, I, I just to reconfirm, I have Janelle Rutten and Caitlin Cordova. Those okay. are our two winners, and um, we should be able to get their um, email addresses. Probably Tristana from the registrant list, so we can send to you. Yes, okay. I have awesome. them pulled up, and I will. Um, so Janelle and Caitlin and Tish, I will be sending you an email momentarily. So if you don't get it. You guys all have my contact, so let me know. <laughs> Thank okay, you. perfect. Thank you. So Megan, um, Jessica, Tristana, any any other items? I see we're right at about six, a little after 6.30. I don't have anything. Just thank you all. It's been a pleasure um, working with y'all in New Mexico. I'm going to miss you, but I'm excited to be closer to my family. So, um, we say adios. <laughs> <laughs> we will definitely miss you, Jessica. Thank you so much for all your dedication and, and everything to 
all of these social hours and, and everything, everything you've done for the agency, you've definitely been an asset. So you can have some big shoots to fill with what you do. Um, but uh, at least if we continue to do these things virtually, you can we can still get to see you. So that's going to be great. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> Awesome. Well, with that, thank you ladies so much for your attention. Um, again, we love seeing you guys every month. It's so great. And uh, hopefully it sounds like you guys really enjoyed this topic. I did. Um, and I always learn something new every time. And Trish is a, a wealth of knowledge. So um, definitely take down her information, reach out to her. Uh, and it's great that you offer to, to continue uh, passing your knowledge on Trish, that's, that's amazing. So thank you for what you do. And thank you for your time this evening. And with that, um, everybody have a wonderful evening and we look forward to seeing you back on June 22nd and have a great month. Um, hopefully get out there, get on the water. <laughs> the invitation goes out to ladies too. If you guys want to fish with me, you know how to find me. Sure. Most definitely. Thank you. Cool. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone.